Hi guys, hope you're all doing well. In the last episode you saw that I was moving things around in the kitchen to make way for the new boiler, which it then turned out I couldn't get fitted because there was lead piping running up on the hot feed, which I needed to get replaced. So I had to pull part of the kitchen out, rip up the bathroom floor and get that sorted for the boiler guys to come back and actually put in my boiler. So let me show you what I've been up to since then. The boiler is now in. So this has been in now for a few days i've not filmed at all since the boiler was fitted because the house was an absolute bomb site so i've just been tidying up and um, so all went well with getting that put in obviously it's still been quite warm i've only had the heating on for about five minutes but it's been quite novel actually having hot water and um, so the only thing that well there was two issues actually that i had with this the first one being um, the condensate pipe, so it's made a bit of a mess of the outside of the wall which I'll just show you now. So I've now got this huge condensate pipe running all the way across this part of the wall outside which looks a complete eyesore and then there's also the pipe work coming out for the whatever it is so what i want to do here is actually get some trellis and a planter to cover that up i hate the way that it looks at the minute another issue was that when they were actually coming to take out the old boiler they couldn't do it because there was actually a piece of asbestos like fireboard or something above the top of the boiler so I need to get a specialist company out to come and remove that and I should probably get some more testing done around the house whilst that's taking place as well. Just to make sure that there's nothing else that needs removing by the professionals in terms of asbestos. I did mention in the last video that this was put in using a boiler grant. So this wasn't completely free, it still cost me 1400 but it did actually save me a hell of a lot of money in comparison to using a different company. I'd had British Gas out to give me a quote for doing a boiler replacement and the price was 5200 because of like running new pipe work, which I ended up doing partially anyway, um, taking the boiler out and stuff so seeing as they didn't actually take out the old boiler I'm going to get back in touch with them and see if I can get some money back because technically what I've paid for I haven't got all of it Um, I still need them to send an electrician around to wire in the boiler properly and also put in the thermostat minimal pipe work really there's a little bit at the top that I need to box in and underneath isn't too bad but I was a little bit disappointed because the boiler actually sticks out further than the cupboard so I couldn't put the spur cupboard door on there so that's a bit of a pain as well. definitely recommend looking into one of those boiler schemes um, basically if you're on certain types of benefits so that can be child tax credit, child benefit, universal credit um, you can fill in a form online and depending on your circumstances it will mean that you get more or less off but it's worth looking into i'd originally started off um a grant application with eon and it said on their website that it was at least a 395 pounds contribution towards the boiler and eon were basically an absolute nightmare this was all part of something called the affordable warm scheme so the government contributes money into getting homes more energy efficient by getting these new boilers put in and basically Eon had wasted about eight or nine weeks of my time. The guy that they had sent out to do the survey had said that I needed a whole new central heating system which no one else had said so the price that came in with Eon on the affordable warm scheme was 4200 which is just ridiculous because I didn't have £4,000 to be spending on new central heating system which is absolutely fine the way that it is so Eon really really wasted my time with all of that because when I contacted this company I'd literally done like filled in an online form I think on the Sunday I got a call back from them on the Monday survey booked in the day after that and they could have literally got the boiler installed within a week but I'd pushed the date back a little bit so anyway 
very very long story the boiler is in it's all working and that's one big big job that's now out of the way thankfully I've had lots of you sending in your projects so I'm going to be doing my very first project of the week at the end of this video so make sure that you stay tuned for that right at the end we will see a project that one of the subscribers has been doing for me to share with you then. I've actually been doing stuff over the last couple of days but just not filming it. So I've got this area in the pantry kind of sorted out now and I'd picked up this absolutely gorgeous DC fix believe it or not wrap for on top of the MDF and I am so so impressed with how much this looks like quartz worktop it it really does look so so realistic it was six pound for a two meter roll and I've done obviously the top of this and then I decided to go down these side panels with it as well and also do that shelf because the white paint against the dishwasher door it wasn't the same colour so I think that looks a lot better like that I still need to fix in the plinth underneath the dishwasher and just kind of sort out something down here but I'd picked up a bit of trunking because I've got the wire for the fridge freezer running along here and then I've got an extension lead hidden under there which has got the fridge plugged in and then that just runs to there so I've still got a little bit to do in here but that is looking so much better now and I've decided that this is the wrap that I'm going to use on the worktops in the kitchen it really does look stunning and you can't see it in all its glory really on camera but I am so so impressed with this and it went on like an absolute dream I'm struggling a little bit with the chaos in the house at the moment the kitchen looks a mess the bathroom looks a mess everywhere is just so messy and I'm a little bit overwhelmed with what I should carry on doing things that are holding me up in here now is that I need to get the electric sorted so I need to get this cooker point moved over here so that I can add in the new cooker station over here I need to get the walls stripped off so that I can move this radiator over here too and I need to start tackling these tiles I'm really putting off doing this because I know that it's going to be an absolute nightmare but it is something that needs to get done so I'm just very very concerned about the amount of mess that this is going to make and I am feeling like really overwhelmed with the state of the house at the minute and I don't really want to be making it look any worse than it already does but it's something that needs to be done so there's a few things that I need to try and get organised I've been sorting out my tools just trying to make things a little bit easier for me to do and yeah I'm just in a little bit of limbo as to what to start on next today has been a total flop I've actually felt really really tired the last few days um, and I've been struggling to force myself to do things and I don't know whether it is because there's like so many things going on and I am feeling overwhelmed so I ended up going having a nap earlier and not doing anything so it's actually I think 11 o'clock um, so no doubt I'm still going to be up for a few hours so I figured what I would do is actually bring the small tv into the kitchen because i've just recently started watching gilmore girls and i've just enjoyed having it on in the background and what i want to do is get all of this sticky stuff removed off the wall because i just want to get it looking a little bit nicer in here so i want to paint this tomorrow ideally or over the next couple of days even though i'm going to be pulling the tiles down I just want it looking a little bit nicer so I still need to pull some of the sticky bits of the stick on tiles off and someone on Instagram had mentioned about using a hairdryer so I think I'll go and grab the hairdryer and it should help unstick it and I've tried using just some nail varnish remover to get like the sticky residue off which was recommended and it works perfectly um, so I need to this is a bit that I tested it on still a few little bits on there so I'm just going to stick the TV on and get cracking with that and hopefully get sort of like all of this bit 
cleared off so that I can paint these bits of the wall. Absolutely not prepared for doing these ceiling tiles. I officially hate polystyrene. Hate isn't a strong enough word. I despise it and I am really really not looking forward to finishing this off because just from pulling down the polystyrene coving I can already see how much of a mess this is going to make and I am really not in the mood for doing this this week. So I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I just wanted to get like the walls all one colour because there was bits of grey, bits of magnolia and it was just looking really crap. So I'd started off by doing a coat of white which is looking better already now that that, I think that was grey, was that grey wall? So that's looking better already and then I thought well actually I'm going to have to pull off the polystyrene at the top because I knew that there was going to be like a gap behind it because it was overlapping onto the ceiling tiles so I've got all of this bit off all of this bit off and I'm struggling a little bit with this because the plasterboard has been put over the polystyrene so I'm just going to leave that there for the time being and um, that's all I'm doing on that for today so there's still all of that that needs coming off I mean to be fair I've pulled these off by hand because the scraper that I've got full of bloody filler I can't find my decent scrapers I definitely can't continue doing that until I've got a fresh sharp scraper but I think it only seems to be sort of like on in dots so I think with a decent scraper that should come off and it looks as though half of the roof has been plastered, half hasn't. I don't, oh, I'm just not looking forward to how much of a mess this is going to be. So I'm really, really not motivated to do this in the slightest. And I know how I am with doing jobs. If I don't feel like doing it, I shouldn't do it because I'm just going to end up annoying myself. So I'm going to tidy everything up in the kitchen. Because I think that the kitchen is always like the worst room to be renovating because obviously it's really important to be able to cook. Which I've got HelloFresh again this week that literally got delivered yesterday. So I've still got another four nights worth of meals. So there's no going, oh, I'm just going to get a takeaway tonight or bang something in the oven. I've got four meals now for the next four nights that I have to cook. And I'm just not mentally prepared to not have like a decent use of the kitchen or for the kitchen to be an absolute mess. So I'm going to get tidied up in here. And whilst I've got the white paint out, I'm actually just going to do a little bit of a whip over of some of the walls in the back room. I just want to get some of the rooms looking a little bit nicer because the walls are still manky even after having a clean up. They just, they just look disgusting and it's getting to me a little bit now, seeing everything so dirty. So I'm going to whip over the wall, um, I'll show you which one. So I'm going to whip over this wall that's in the back room so that I can put some curtains up because Alyssia has been struggling seeing the TV um, with the glare coming in. So I'll probably do that tonight because I've got the white paint out and then that might end up turning into painting some of the other walls. That's obviously going to be polystyrene, so I'm going to try and stick that up and just get in this back room looking a little bit nicer because by the looks of it, the front room's not going to be done for another couple of months and it is getting to me now not having a decent space 
because even if I paint in here the carpet is still disgusting um, I don't know whether to maybe try and hire a carpet cleaner because mine just doesn't seem to be doing anything I think it's broken so I got that wall painted last night and it does look so much better. I didn't want to put the light on because it casts a bit of a shadow but that looks so much fresh now and I gave around the frame of the door a really good scrub so that is a massive improvement. I still need to clean the windows on both sides because there's a lot of brick dust from where the guys were doing the boiler. And this morning I've been scrubbing at the carpet and I hope you can actually see the difference here. This is the side that I've cleaned, that's the side that I haven't. So I basically filled up, because the carpet cleaner's been over this a couple of times and it hasn't really been doing the trick. So I filled a bucket up with um, some hot water and some surf washing liquid. I've got a scrubbing brush, which actually is not in there. What have I done with it? So I've been scrubbing at the carpet. I've used a little bit of Astonish carpet and upholstery cleaner as well on the really, really dirty bits. And that actually hasn't come up too bad. Like, look at the difference in the colour of that. So then I've gone over with the carpet cleaner to kind of do a rinse and a pick up because I think it's the brush that's maybe the issue on that. Look at the colour difference. I'm absolutely amazed by that because this was really dirty. Um, there's a bit in front of the door there. I've currently got the kittens in the kitchen. So once I've moved them out of the way, I'm going to do in front of the door again. But I managed to get like all down the sides of the skirting boards with the corner of that brush. So that is a massive improvement. There's a bit of wax here, I think that's what it is anyway. So I'll put a cloth and an iron over the top of that and try and melt that off and get rid of it. But I'm going to do this in sections. So I'll probably do the rest of I mean, look how dirty it is. When I moved the dishwasher outside, I ended up getting like this huge dirty stain there so but this is just horrific you'll understand now probably seeing the difference in colour as to why I am not happy with this carpet so if I can get it all looking like that I'll be pretty happy to be honest and um, so I don't think I'll bother with the rug doctor I think it is going to need a scrub so I'll just do it in squares scrubbing at it going off with the carpet cleaner and that should bring it up so much better like literally I cannot believe the difference in colour in that That is the curtains up. I think I would prefer that to be a little bit higher, but I'm not going to mess around with that now. And I've done <laughs> all around the rug, cleaning the carpet, and it has made a massive, massive difference getting down with that scrubbing brush because literally, I think I've tried that carpet cleaner three times and it has never come up as good as this. It's still not perfect but it's so much better. So I do feel so much better now that this room is looking a little bit nicer. The carpet is a massive improvement. So hopefully over the next week, I want to just try and get the rest of the room looking a little bit nicer. I'm gonna get rid of the gray sofa, whip over the rest of the walls with some paint, and then at least that's one room that's, again, looking a little bit more decent whilst I'm working on the rest of the house. So it's now time for the project of the week. This week's project of the week was sent in by Jenny and her husband Keith. So they actually insulated the conservatory roof. So if you've had a conservatory, you'll know that it's always super hot during the summer and cold in the winter. So it's not really a room that's always 
usable throughout the year. So by insulating the conservatory roof, it means that it's going to be usable all year round. It should restrict the heat that goes into the room during the summer and make it a lot warmer during the winter. So Jenny and Keith screwed wood blocks of two by one to the struts in the ceiling and then stapled the insulation over those. And then they added some more two by one wooden struts following the pattern of the roof struts along the edges. And they needed to screw on some plastic edging strips where the boards would slot in and then they said that was where the fun part came in. The plastic boards had to be cut very, very accurately, especially for the triangular areas they slot into each other like laminate flooring and then the strip at the top was then done last the light replaced and then it was redecorated just the walls and the woodwork um toby the dog was monitoring the whole process and jenny said even he eventually got fed up and fell asleep but Jenny's noticing that it has restricted the heat in there a little bit and hopefully it will also drown out some of the noise from the rain. So I think this is a really good project for anyone that's got a conservatory. You will know exactly the issue with this. So this is something that Jenny and Keith did together. It was um, done using a platform. Obviously working at height is quite difficult work. So I'm really, really impressed with this job. I think it looks fabulous and it does make that room a lot more usable now for them throughout the year. So thanks so much to Jenny for sending that in to me. And if you've got a project that you want to show, make sure you send it over either to me on Instagram or my email address is down in the description box. And I will see you guys next week. Thank you so much for watching.